good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, I'm James Choi, uh, Senior Vice President and Chief Information and Marketing Officer and Head of Investor Relations at Samsung Biologics. And uh, it's my pleasure to tell you about uh, you know, a concept called inadaption uh, that we've applied to unlock opportunities during the pandemic. Um, I'll talk briefly about Samsung Biologics and how we came to be. Uh, most of you are probably familiar with the Samsung brand. Uh, very popular in electronics, uh, but we also have our uh, core expertise in engineering and construction, uh, especially in uh, sanit uh, hygienic uh, piping and uh, clean room facilities, uh, which the group used to leverage um, in the construction of biologic manufacturing plants. And that's how we were born about uh, 10 years ago. Uh, about 10 years ago, the Samson Group decided to, you know, uh, get into the pharmaceutical uh, pharma biopharma business. And, um, you know, as of today, uh, we have three plants, uh, all mammalian cell culture manufacturing plants, uh, along with, uh, you know, fill and fit, uh, aseptic film and finish. Um, and um, contract development services is something that we also recently launched, uh, along with um, uh, bio safety testing. Uh, as I mentioned before, we have uh, three uh, mammalian uh, cell culture plants here in uh, Songdo, South Korea. And uh, last year, we uh, proudly announced the uh, groundbreaking of our fourth plant, what we call the super plant, uh, which will be the largest uh, plant to date. Um, and it's going to capture, it's going to leverage a lot of the innovation and manufacturing and engineering construction expertise that we've accumulated to date. And um, additionally, last year, we uh, started to expand into uh, the United States. So we opened our cell line development uh, organization uh, R&D plant, uh, excuse me, R&D laboratory in uh, San Francisco, which is one of the two major bio hubs in, in the United States. And uh, we have plans to continue to expand uh, throughout uh, the United States, Europe, and uh, the rest of Asia. So, so now we'll talk about uh, inadaption, which obviously is a contraction of the, of the words innovation and adaption. Um, so, you know, the definition of innovation is really, you know, carrying out new combinations, the introduction of new goods. It's all about, you know, innovating and developing something new, which implies being the first. And to be the first, uh, you have to have speed. Adaption, on the other hand, is about adjusting and adapting to change. And the success is driven by the fitness of how well you've adapted to that change. So if you combine the two concepts at Samsung Biologics, uh, you know, in adaption is really about being the first to make swift adjustments to improve our success amid new or changing conditions. And as we all know, the biggest, uh, you know, changing condition that we all experienced last year was the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Shouldn't say was, it is still the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, you know, obviously many of us faced a lot of, uh, you know, disruptions to our personal lives, but in the business and the industry, the main uh, disruptions were, you know, threefold. One uh, were obviously travel restrictions, which in our business as a contract manufacturing organization, uh, was huge because it limited our ability to have face-to-face -face conversations and meetings with clients, particularly during uh, client audits, due diligence, and with regulatory authorities doing on-site inspections. The second impact, which was related to the first, is about social distancing and the impact that had on major industry conferences and seminars. Uh, as we all seen uh, last year, Bio International is still BioDigital, uh, you know, this year is still Bio Digital 2021. Uh, CPH I uh, last year were uh, you know all transitioned to digital or virtual, and some were even canceled outright. Again, limiting our ability to connect with our clients. And the third, which is an offshoot of all these things, is that as more and more businesses reacted, uh, they started offering online services. So, from a consumer standpoint. Um, you know, the, the demand for more online abilities and the ability to do things uh, without uh, having to do things in person uh, was heightened. So 
I'm going to talk about in the next few slides, you know, the three solutions that we came to this, uh, came to address this uh, live virtual tour or virtual exhibition hall. And, uh, you know, the things that we did to accelerate our digitization uh, process. First of these was our live virtual tour. And the problem, obviously, as I stated before, is the inability and limitations of our clients and more importantly, the regulatory agencies to, um, you know, come and visually inspect our site. So, you know, in the, in the span of five weeks, and literally we started uh, like late January, as soon as we saw uh, that things were starting to head in this direction, we immediately began uh, building this, uh, you know, designing and building this uh, platform. And, you know, what differentiates it between other, you know, standard uh, teleconference, video conferencing platforms like Zoom or WebEx is that uh, we have both, it integrates seamlessly with both the hardware and software. And that's important because the hardware has to be in the clean room conditions. And also the software has to be secure and support true high definition in 1080p real time. And that allows the inspectors and our clients to be able to see really minute details from wherever they are. And they can access it uh, via any mobile device, uh, PC or laptop. And we also architected it in a way that allows us to leverage the global servers and the global cloud network to optimize the network bandwidth, uh, depending on where the client and clients are uh, dialing in from. So you see some of the screenshots on the left there uh, of a secure login that is given to the client, and then they can then you know, log in. Not only can they interact in real time with people on the shop floor, they can also you know, review our documentation. And uh, you know, to date, uh, we have 42 plus and counting uh, client audits and regulatory inspections from all the major agencies. And uh, we believe that we were actually the first FDA uh, inspection that passed virtually, um, you know, using this technology. And, um, you know, we're pretty proud of that. And uh, we think this is actually a very good example of in adaption and work. The second example uh, addresses the, the other issue about all the cancellations and the, you know, the, the digital conversion of all of these uh, major conferences. Uh, we knew we, ha we had to do something extra, right? So we actually built out an immersive and interactive 3D uh, experience for clients um, called the Virtual Exhibition Hall. It allows the, the, the users to be able to navigate and walk through our, uh, this, uh, this Virtual Exhibition Hall and then interact and click on displays and see uh, videos and also schedule meetings uh, in real time uh, with our account reps and see all the different um, you know, offerings and our, uh, artifacts and brochures. Um, the results were we got three times the number of leads that we normally get, uh, you know, from traditional uh, trade show booths. And uh, we actually uh, won the uh, best digital marketing campaign from Fierce Pharma. Okay. So the slide that I was on was our live, our virtual exhibition hall. And again, um, this actually can be accessed right now. Um, so, uh, you know, we'll, if you go to our uh, website, uh, there are links you can navigate to and get to the uh, virtual exhibition hall. Again, apologize. Third was our accelerated uh, digitization. Um, and we um, worked with a, you know, one of our strategic partners to um, accelerate the migration of all of our quality systems to the cloud. And uh, this allowed our clients, this allows our clients to securely access all of the related um, you know, quality manuals and documentation and uh, quality records um, in a secure way. And uh, this provides a huge advantage because traditionally, uh, you know, uh, some clients have people that are on site that they call person and plant or PIP, as some of you may be aware. And uh, this allows our concept of a virtual PIP and again, which is more meaningful during um, you know all the travel restrictions and uh, uh, you know issues uh, created by the pandemic. 
Another uh, system that uh, we were the first to uh, implement and um, introduce is our testing timeline system. And the key benefit here is that, uh, you know, this allows clients that use our services for biosafety testing to see in real time the status of their tests. Now, um, you know, most uh, uh, service providers that provide this capability are manually aggregating this from the various legacy systems or, you know, the disjointed systems that they have that provide this. And uh, in our environment, all of this is uh, fully integrated and in real time. So what are the factors that allowed us to innovate and introduce, uh, you know, uh, you know, the, the speed at which we implemented uh, uh, these types of technologies? Well, um, interestingly enough, you know, what, what started out as a potential disadvantage, which is our relative newness in this industry. I mentioned in the beginning that we've been in this industry now for about 10 years, uh, actually, actually turned out to be an advantage in that we didn't have the weight and the barrier, uh, the inertia of all of the different legacy systems that you might find in, in companies that uh, have been around a long time. Plus, uh, because of our relative newness, uh, you know, we're much faster to adapt and embrace change. Uh, on top of that, our geographic location being here in uh, South Korea, you know, we've always had to close that geographic distance through more virtual technologies and uh, tools that allowed our clients to be able to connect with us in real time, no matter where they are. So that gave us an edge. As I mentioned before, the Samsung innovation DNA, uh, the, his the, the history of all the innovation technology, uh, we're able to leverage that. And all this is summed up in something that we've uh, created called 3P Innovation. And what that is, is, um, you know, people, process, and portfolio innovation which is our way of capturing our unique strengths, our values, our things that make us unique and competitively differentiate us. And uh, this is something that, uh, you know, we instill in all of our employees and uh, uh, acts as part of our corporate DNA. Just quickly, I mean, uh, some of you out there are marketers and I know some of you uh, uh, folks out there are in IT. And uh, you may hear from time to time, you know, what are we doing with IoT or what are we doing with big data or blockchain or AI? Whatever the latest uh, trend, have, you know, tends to be. And we get the same questions, but, uh, you know, what we put together is something called, that we call technology augmented operations that uh, really uh, allows us to vet and make sure these technologies are aligned with their overall business value. They provide business value and, and are aligned with their strategy. So we do look at uh, the hype cycle uh, that Gartner puts out to see what's trending in the industry, what's, you know, what's, uh, what's out there. But we make sure that uh, we evaluate it, uh, we do proof of concepts, and uh, to, to ensure that these things are the right fit for us um, and that they solve a particular solution or add value and eventually uh, are, you know, supported in our production environment, as you can see, all the different uh, technologies that have gone through this uh, process. And I want to close with, uh, you know, a couple of other items that are in it, that are currently in our innovation uh, pipeline, uh, AI and blockchain, because those are the uh, biggest things happening right now. And we are looking at AI. Um, we think there's uh, several applications, but the three specific areas that uh, we've been uh, studying and uh, really evaluating are in uh, visual inspection uh, to not only improve on uh, error detections and avoid human error, but to really add value to our clients by accelerating the overall uh, inspection speed. The second is to optimize our processes and development and controls. And here we can look at, you know, specific algorithms and look for, you know, data uh, correlations that would help us to optimize uh, the overall development process. And the third is to make sure that, um, you know, we apply AI concepts to ensure the safety and uh, GMP compliance um, by various monitoring uh, techniques and uh, other advanced uh, solutions that we can uh, apply. 
And uh, blockchain is something that uh, we do think that uh, will be, um, you know, much broader in terms of uh, acceptance and uh, uh, adoption throughout the industry. Right now, it's starting to gain some steam, and uh, we see some clear potential for this, uh, especially as it relates to uh, drug discovery, development, uh, the supply chain, especially in terms of uh, being able to track, uh, you know, your overall distribution and serialization. And anywhere that, uh, you know, we need a secure way, uh, an infallible way of, uh, a trustable way of sharing our data and in a, in a secure way uh, beyond uh, our company with our partners and clients, uh, we, we see some huge uh, potential with blockchain. And this is something that we're currently uh, heavily investigating at the moment. Okay. So that wraps up my um, presentation. And, uh, and again, I apologize for the uh, mishap with the slides. Uh, we'll see if we can make the uh, slides and presentation available, uh, but I'd be happy to take any kind of questions from the audience at this time. Uh, oh, next if, if you like, I can uh, ask questions from the audience. Uh, mm -hmm. So the first question is coming from myself, and this is, uh, what blockchain platform do you use? I'm sorry, what was the question again? Which blockchain platform do you use? So we have not selected a platform yet. We're still evaluating various uh, platforms, uh, including the one that, um, you know, is uh, developed by so the Samsung uh, data, our own IT uh, services company. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're currently evaluating various platforms. We have not uh, selected a specific one yet. Okay. And the second question was, how are the ethical aspects of AI addressed within Samsung Biologics? Example, BIOS shifts. That's a very good question. We're not there yet. Um, but, um, you know, we are a service provider for our clients. So first and foremost, uh, everything that we do is in the best interest of our clients and their customers, which are the patients. So those are the superseding um, guidance, if you will, of any kind of technology implementation, including AI. But uh, we have not uh, gotten to a stage where we're uh, having to confront those types of issues. Thank you. Another question, does Samsung Biologics have any interactions with the other pillars of Samsung in solving some of the digitalization issues? I'm sorry, what, what was the question? Does Samsung Biologics have any interactions with the other pillars of Samsung in solving some of the digitalization issues? Gotcha, gotcha. I see. So uh, the other affiliates or the other uh, Samsung businesses, um, yes, we do. Um, in fact, um, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, really um, accelerated a lot of the innovation. But even before then, uh, we've been working uh, in collaboration with not only the consumer uh, electronics, but also semiconductors. Um, any business that is uh, um, has similar traits to us, where they're servicing customers or providing a contract manufacturing service, we now not only... Um, you know, engage them to develop uh, new solutions, but we also benchmark and uh, ensure that we uh, exchange and uh, share best practices. So that's one of the benefits of being a Samsung business is to the ability to leverage uh, all of that uh, technology and, uh, and know-how. Thank you. Thanks, thanks everybody. Bye-bye.